So we've got a pretty interesting integral equation to show everyone today. So our goal is to find all functions f and numbers a satisfying the equation, the integral from a to y minus x over x of f of t dt equals the integral from x minus one to y minus one of f of t dt. And here we'll have x and y from the interval one to infinity. Although I'll let you decide exactly what the restriction of x and y needs to be. I think this is a little stricter than it needs to be. So let's notice that x and y are both variables. Anytime you see the variables as bounds of integration, you should think back to one of the fundamental theorems of calculus. And depending on the textbook, it might be part one or part two, but it says that the derivative with respect to x of the integral from a to x of g of t dt equals g of x. Or in other words, the antiderivative of g of x is this integral from a to x of g of t dt. So now from here what we'll do is apply this fundamental theorem of calculus to this problem by taking the derivative of both sides with respect to y. Okay, so taking the derivative of the left-hand side with respect to y will give us f evaluated at y minus x over x times the derivative with respect to y of y minus x over x. We have to use the chain rule there because this is just not y in the upper bound, it is a function of y. But then we don't have to be so careful over here, we just get f evaluated at y minus one. So something like that. Okay, now let's note that y minus x over x can be rewritten as one over x times y minus one. That means taking the derivative with respect to y of that is quite simple. We just get one over x. So that's gonna give us the following equation. One over x from this derivative and then f evaluated at y minus x over x equals f evaluated at y minus one. Okay, so now from here, we'll notice that we've got an x outside of everything. So that's probably a good one to keep as a variable. And then we can set y equal to a constant. That'll build us a fairly simple functional equation. Maybe we'll set y equal to the constant three. That's because three minus one will be equal to two. That's firmly in this range here, although it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that'll leave us with one over x times f of three minus x over x equals f of two. So now we've got something which is hopefully a fairly simple functional equation. Now what I'd like to do is take this one step further and I'll rewrite this as f of three minus x over x equals f of two times x. But what I'd really like is to have the inside of this function be something simple, like a single variable, and then the outside could be a little bit more complicated. So let's do that with the following calculation. So let's maybe set t, a new variable, equal to three minus x over x, and let's solve for x. Okay, so that's gonna give us x times t equals three minus x, or in other words, x times t plus x equals three, or x times t plus one equals three, or x equals three over t plus one. Okay, so that's looking good, and now we've got kind of a first round version of our function, and that would be f, of t equals three times f of two all over t plus one. Now let's take that and plug it into our original equation to determine the values of a that make this work. So we just determined a shape for our function f and now we want to determine this number a. So let's take this shape for f and we'll plug it into our equation over here. So we'll have the integral from a to y minus x over x of three times f of two over t plus one dt equals 
the integral from x minus one up to y minus one of three times f of two over t plus one dt. But now let's notice that three times f of two is a constant with respect to the integral, so we can factor it out of both integrals. But then we can cancel it from both sides, assuming that f of two is not zero. So assuming that f of two is not zero, we can cancel these two numbers and then simply replace them with the number one, and that makes everything kind of nice. So that happens if f of two is not equal to zero. Of course, if f of two is equal to zero, then our original function is just the zero function, but the zero function clearly satisfies this, so that's not super interesting. Okay, so now let's take the antiderivative and plug in the bounds. In other words, we'll do the fundamental theorem of calculus part one or two, again, depending on the author. That leaves us with the natural log of t plus one evaluated from a up to y minus x over x equals the natural log of t plus one evaluated from x minus one up to y minus one. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. We have the natural log of y minus x over x plus the number one minus the natural log of a plus one. I guess I should maybe have the absolute value of a plus one, but let's just assume that a plus one is positive here. You can go through the cases where it's negative kind of on their own. So minus the natural log of a plus one equals the natural log of y minus the natural log of x from that right hand side. Okay, good. Now let's simplify what's going on over here. So I think that should be quite nice. Here we have, this is the natural log of y over x minus one plus one from simplifying that y minus x over x. But notice the minus one and the plus one cancel and we're left with natural log of y over x. So in other words, we have the natural log of y over x minus the natural log of a plus one equals the natural log of y minus the natural log of x. But of course, by logarithm rules, we know the natural log of y over x is exactly that difference of natural logs which is over on the right hand side. So this cancels with this and we're left with the natural log of a plus one equals zero. But if the natural log of a plus one equals zero, that means that a in fact must be equal to zero because a plus one equals one. That's the only like root of the natural log. Okay, so in the end, we determined our number a and we also determined our function. Notice we have a whole family of functions. Perhaps we would want to rewrite that as f of t equals c over t plus one, where c is actually any constant. So our final solution would be some function like this, and then our number a equals zero. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.